All right, welcome everyone. So today we're gonna to be talking about finding median in linear time, okay? And we are going to be, it's a divide and conquer algorithm. So that's what we're gonna to study today. It's a very short lecture. So this is all covered in the book, in the textbook section 4.6, so you can find from there. And we will be using divide and conquer algorithm design technique. It's a design technique that we have covered in the class and it is a technique in which we solve complex problems by breaking it down into smaller instances of the same problem, combining the results. An example that you can see in this picture is when, a, when an array is being divided into two parts, two recursive calls, and then we combine the results. Now, depending upon your exact pro problem and the algorithm, you could break it down into multiple parts of different sizes. But generally, the technique here is that you will create smaller instances of the same problem. So that's the divide and conquer technique. So let's look at what this particular problem here is. The median finding, it's simply defined as we're given an array of unsorted numbers, and we want to find the median in linear time. Linear time means order n time. Median itself is defined as the middle number in the sorted sequence. The given array is not sorted. If it was sorted, we would just simply return the middle number. Uh, so the given array is not sorted, but if it were sorted, the middle number, that's how we define the median. And if there are two numbers, in case the array is of even size, uh, we take the average of those two middle numbers. Generally speaking, these arrays are large, so the array, the, being the even and the odd is not the main issue there. Rather, it is that you're trying to find the median. So the simple option, first of all, is just to sort it. If we sort it, and then we can return the middle element or the mean of the two middle elements, that would just take as much time as it takes to sort the array, which is order and log n. However, in this particular lecture, we are interested in finding a more efficient algorithm and specifically in a linear time algorithm. So in this particular median finding, like many of the divide and conquer algorithms, we are interested, we start by doing a generalization step. This is very important for all recursive, all divide and conquer kind of programs. We generalize a problem rather than saying find the median, we say, okay, we're going to do a selection. That means given an array A, we'll find the kth smallest element in the given array. If for example, k is one, that just translates to saying that we're gonna find the smallest. If k is n, then we mean then it means that we're going to find the largest. And if n by two, that's kind of like finding the median, or you do n by two or n by two plus one, and then take the average, that's like finding the median. So this algorithm is in when generalized this way are referred to as the selection algorithms, and you can easily look them up on Wikipedia using the name selection algorithm or using order statistic. So again, to repeat, that's a generalization of a largest, smallest, median, et cetera kind of problem. So let's look at the selection algorithm's general template. We'll take a selection, we'll give an array A, we're given the index K, and what we will generally do is We'll select an element X, not exactly sure how just yet, but we'll select an element X. We'll partition the array A on X. Then we'll have the left-hand side array, that's A prime, the, the partition element X, and the right-hand side array, that's A double prime. The overall A, the array A has been divided into three parts, the array A prime, the element X, the array A double prime, so here, the, uh, after the partition has been done, that means that everything in A prime is less than equal to X. Everything in A double prime is greater than equal to X. And X is in its right spot when we are finished with partitioning. Now we want to compare the location of X with K because we were interested in finding the Kth smallest element if the middle scenario, if, if let's suppose X lands at the location K, might be a small probability event, but if it does happen, then we were lucky, then we will just return X because that's what we were looking for. 
most likely that's not the case. So the other two scenarios are more likely that maybe K is less than K prime. So that means that the element that we were looking for is in the left-hand side array. So that's in the array A prime. So we will make a recursive call and then we will make the recursive call on this array A prime. And we will still look for the Kth smallest element in A prime. In the other side of equation, maybe the element that we were looking for is greater than k prime. k prime is the location of this element x. That means that we wanted to see, we wanted to find, the element that we want to find is now in the array a double prime. So in that case, we will make a recursive call on the right-hand side of the array. That's a double prime. However, in this case, we will be finding the k minus kth smallest element of this array a double prime because we have already eliminated k prime elements. The partition element landed at location k prime. So that means we've already eliminated that, that many elements. So we will simply find the k minus kth smallest element in the array a double prime. That's the general template of the selection. Okay. So again, we take a random element X or a certain element X, we will see how to find it. Partition the array A on X. Look at the left-hand side, A prime, right-hand side, A double prime, the location of the element X. Compare that to what we were looking for. And depending upon the comparison, we will either look, make a recursive call on the left-hand side or make a recursive call on the right-hand side or in the small likelihood that we just got lucky, we will return the element X. So that's the general template. Let's take a very uh, example partition here. Let's suppose we have the, we are given the array A and we are trying to find the fifth smallest element here. So this was the array A and we selected this random partition element here to be the one here six. And now we want to partition the array. Let's suppose we partition the array A into A prime, this random partition element six and A double prime. Once we are done, we will have this particular array left, left-hand side six and the right-hand side. So the location of element six is five. So this is the lucky scenario, in which case we will return six. So after the partition is done, we, we are already done. And as I said, that's a small probability of that, much more likely that we'll have a recursive call scenario. Let's take a look at that. So in this case, we are trying to find in the same array A, the eighth smallest element. We again find the same partition element and that's six. We again partition it. This partitioning, now again results something similar. The location of the element six is equal to five. So this element six, the location of that element six is five. That's the index in this, in this partitioned array. And this we notice is less than what we were looking for. Therefore, the selection A8 must be in the right-hand side part of the array, array A double prime. So we calculate this as selection A8 is this equal to selection A double prime, the right-hand side array. And now we eliminate these five. So therefore it's eight minus five elements that we're going to be finding. So that means we're going to be finding selection A double prime in that A double prime, the third smallest, smallest element because five elements were eliminated. And now we can focus on A double prime alone. So that's the two examples that you see. Of course, you can construct an example on the left-hand side array as well, but essentially you are either, you luckily find the right location or you have to recurse left or you make a recursive call on the right-hand side. So now our objective translates a little bit to finding a good partition. If the partition is very uneven, such that your partition was towards the very end of the array, that algorithm may not be very efficient. So we want to find a partition element that partitions the array evenly. Now, evenly doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be right in the middle. 
even if it's a fixed fraction, it'll meet our purpose as we're going to see when we do a little further analysis here. So let's look at the first approach here that we can use. There are two broad approaches. We can either use probability to find a good partition by just trying a few different times, or we can find a little bit more complicated route to find a good partition deterministically. We're going to explore both methods. So let's look at the probabilistic method. So we partition randomly. Randomly means we just select a random element from the array. We partition the array on that element, on the randomly selected element. And we calculate, is the partition a good partition or a bad partition? Where our definition being, a good partition is something that lands in the middle half. In the middle half, that means it's between one between the first quarter and the third quarter of that, of that array. So in the middle half, not in the bottom quarter or in the top quarter, but in the middle half. Because it's in the half, so that means the probability will find a partition that does, that's a good partition is a probability half. We can keep repeating it if we find a bad partition with a probability half, we do it again, and we may have to do it again, but the expected number of times that you have to do a partition until, until you get a good partition is two from our probability analysis. So therefore, from we might have to partition two times and then we'll roughly find something somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle, again, being in the middle half of the array. Now let's suppose a good partition lands at location K prime where again, K prime is in the middle half, it's between N by four and three N by four. Depending upon the value of K and K prime, we make the recursive call as we have in the general template. And after the partition, we know we are going to be eliminating either the left, either the left hand side of the array or the right hand side of the array. And we know neither is going to be less than a quarter size of the array. Therefore, we are going to be left with no more than 75% of the array, in many cases smaller, but no more than 75% of the array. So therefore the, rec the recurrence relation that we can write is T of N is less than or equal to two N, two N for doing two, two partitions on average. And each partition only takes a linear time because we just go through the array and put in the left-hand side or right-hand side. And then we make the, rec the recursive call, which doesn't take more than T of 0.75 n because that array is no more than three quarters of the original array. And that using master theorem or using substitution method, we can say that T of n is less than or equal to Cn. Therefore, T of n is equal to big O of n. So that's a pretty good result. Like I mentioned, there are two things here. There are two approaches we, we have to follow, but we can already, already take a moment to celebrate. We have found the we found an algorithm for finding median in linear time. So that's our linear time median finding algorithm. And you can pretty much stop here if you like, but if you are interested in the rest of it, let's find a deterministic algorithm that helps us also find median in linear time. This algorithm is sometimes called the quick select algorithm, and sometimes it's referred to as the median of medians algorithm. Sometimes also see groups of five algorithm. And the way this algorithm operates is that you divide the array of size n into groups of five. So you we are visualizing this array as if it's groups of five here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, et cetera, et cetera. And then we sort the small groups by themselves, not the entire array. That would defeat the purpose. We just sort the small groups. Once we have the small groups, we have all the groups are sorted. We have the middle row here, which is called the row of medians. We make a recursive call to find the median of medians. Okay, that's a recursive call. Then we partition the array on that median. Now, what is so special about the median of medians? The median of medians is pretty special because let's suppose the median of medians is here. Then we can say that this 30% of the array 
is clearly smaller than that median of medians. This 30% is strictly larger or greater than equal to that median of medians. And these two left-hand side and the, the bottom left and the top right, we don't make any claim on that. We don't really need to do any, any claim on that. But at least we know this median of medians is by definition a good partition in the definition we had defined, we had used earlier. So that's the that's a little bit more detail of the quick select algorithm. X is the median of medians. 30% of elements are less than equal to 30% of elements are greater than equal to. Therefore, X is actually now a very good partition element. Even though we do recognize that while we did not use probability, it it, it will take us longer to find this element X because we already broke the array into smaller parts, sorted the smaller parts, and made it a cursive call to find the median of mediums. So now the median of medians has median of medians has been found uh, with a little bit more effort, but it's guaranteed to be a good partition. In fact, it's guaranteed to be even better because the previous one only had a guarantee of 0.25 to 0.75. This actually is between 0.3 and 0.7. So even a little bit better. So and there are two recursive calls, the first one to find median of medians, and then again on the left-hand side or the right-hand side as the case may be. So the analysis of this again is the T of N is equal to CN. That CN is the time to create smaller arrays, sort them, because the small elements, small arrays were only of size five. There were N by five of them. It takes a constant amount of time to sort an array of size five multiply that with n by 5, it's still a constant. Let's see n to make a recursive call to find the median of medians plus another time to another con another linear time to partition that on the median of medians. And then this is a recursive call on the left hand side or the right hand side, keeping in mind that only 7 n by 10 elements can be there in the recursive call here. And what is the proof that this Tn is linear? Again, this time we can use a substitution method using PMI, and we can find that T of n is equal to big O of n. And that's a pretty huge result. So that's our summary for today, that quick select is an order n time algorithm for finding median or in general for selecting the kth largest or kth smallest. You can always define it one way or the other element in an unsorted array. The array was not sorted when it was given to us. And it's a pretty interesting result because even though there is not a whole lot of difference between n and n log n, but because this algorithm is very, very, very commonly used in other algorithms, it actually plays a huge, hugely practical role. The difference between n and n log n is not just theoretical in this case, because this algorithm is used so often, it actually ends up becoming a pretty practical algorithm. And probabilistic version is generally the one that's used. The deterministic one, even though it's a little interesting algorithm, it has a higher constant. So it's not used so much in practice. I'm sure there are some special circumstances where that one is used. And we will be studying the closest pair of points in our next main lecture. But that's all we have for you today. Have a great one and keep learning.